And more than 2,000 faculty members from California universities have now signed an open letter to President Trump, urging him not to pull out of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Trump administration officials have recently hinted that the president might deviate from that agreement. Those who have signed the letter say that that would undermine the, quote, future of our children and grandchildren. A total of 2,300 faculty members from the UC and Cal State systems have signed that letter. And we're joined now by Associate Professor of Astronomy at UC Berkeley, Aaron Parsons. And Professor Parsons, you wrote this letter. I, I made the mistake of printing it today because the letter is one page. It's signed by 2,344 faculty members, so I got a stack of papers <laughs> about right. that thick from all the signatures. But tell us why you wrote this letter. Well, I've had a concern for uh, several years now that we're not doing enough to address climate change. And uh, hearing the rhetoric that we heard during the campaign about the you know, possibility of uh, you know, climate change being a hoax, really, um, you know, I, in the circles I walk in in academia among scientists, there is no doubt that uh, climate change is happening, it's human cause, and we need to do something to avert this crisis. And I wanted to do something in reaction to that to demonstrate to uh, people who are outside of the spheres that I am in, that there is widespread consensus on this issue. And, and so, obviously, you did get a lot of support from your colleagues. What was their reaction in writing this letter and signing their names to it? Well, a lot of people were very enthusiastic, uh, especially given the outcome of the election. Um, I think a lot of uh, what we have to worry about as scientists and academics is to what degree do we uh, politicize our, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we say. And, you know, especially as a scientist myself, I have to worry a lot about, uh, you know, wanting to be an impartial observer and to state fact uh, without kind of coloring it with my own personal opinions. And so that's something that we're all wrestling with here. But when facts themselves seem to be called into question the way right. they seem to be, then we really, you know, it's not a political issue anymore. Well, we've already heard alternative facts come out from Kellyanne Conway. Let's get to the letter, a couple of uh, some of the points that you raise. The letter urges President Trump to meet the carbon emissions target underlined in the Paris Agreement signed by former President Obama, also to ensure that America becomes the global leader on climate action and invest in clean energy and technologies that remain move carbon gases from the atmosphere. So that's what you're urging President Trump to do. I take it you haven't got a reaction yet from the White House. No, we have not yet uh, got a reaction, but we're all very concerned about this. The Paris uh, Climate Accord is itself not even enough probably to address uh, what's really happening with climate change. We don't know where this boundary is, but you know, it's kind of like this Tower of Jenga blocks and we just keep pulling blocks out and, mm -hmm. and you know we run the risk every time we pull a block out of the whole tower uh, coming down mm -hmm. and so what we're really trying to urge here is for uh, America to be a leader in uh, slowing down how quickly we are contributing to carbon emissions to stop pulling blocks out of this tower and then eventually start developing the technologies that could actually help rebuild us. Okay so this letter has now gone to the White House. I mean realistically what are you hoping for here? Well I don't I have to say, I don't have much uh, hope that on the federal level this is going to change too much. But I really do hope that uh, California, which is itself the sixth biggest economy in the world, uh, could actually make use of this, um, both at the state level in terms of policies that we set here, but also in giving some ammunition to uh, our politicians uh, to, uh, to put pressure on the federal level. Um, and even if we don't achieve everything that we're hoping for here, to at least try not to backslide too much, because we're running out of time here. We can't afford four years of, of uh, no progress on Go this. Governor Brown just a couple weeks ago made the remark, and I don't know how serious he was, but he said California could put up its own satellite to, uh, to keep track of climate change. Uh, is, is that a remark you take seriously? I mean, if, if the federal government pulls out of these agreements and, and decides that climate change is a, a hoax, according to the, our current president, uh, can California do things to monitor climate change? Um, certainly with the economy that we have here, one can hope. Uh, we rely a lot on federal funding for a lot of fundamental research that mm. happens uh, around the world um, and certainly within the United States. And uh, you know, if we were to lose federal funding for a lot of the fundamental work that's being done on this, uh, then it's important work and you know, I give a lot of uh, credit to, to Governor Brown for saying things like this and exploring alternative options. All right. Well, Professor Aaron Parsons, be sure to keep us posted. Let us know if you do, in fact, hear from the Trump administration uh, in response to your letter. Appreciate your okay. time. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for being you. here.